Hello, um, my name is Pat Pat Duffy, Climber, Banslow, County Galway. I am a dream survivor. I was born in 1952 to, to, to my mother, Teresa Duffy and Ned, Edward, I'm sorry. And and I was there, I was, she, she died at the birth of me in 1952. And my aunt, my uncle and aunt then took me to the Rowan house, two miles away where I live here now. And at that time I was there with them and my father was very upset over his, our three sisters were taken out of where my uncle and aunt lived and they were put into a compound in Banislow and then he comes along and he puts me in, he got the parish priest and the doctor to get me into into the home and they were hoping to put me into Banislow but there was no look there and then the only hope then was to put me into Tune. I was entombed in for six, six and a half years, which I suffered at the hands of the church and the state, especially with the church, what they had done to me with my, my health. I was there, I was there for there at that time, and I remember inside, inside the bedrooms, and in where we were in the dorm and where you sleep, I used to wet the bed so often with nerves and fear, fear of everything. And I had, um, infection in the ears and now my ears are very are deaf. I have deaf ears at the moment and wearing ear nets and I suffer with lack of I was always hungry, no food. No one eat any time I eat anything and if one particular day I I was I was sitting down with a few more guys and a lot of member I was sitting into the table and the next thing Next thing, uh, the bishop in potato we had and a tin plate, and one of the guys shook, shook me, shook my shoulder and knocked the plate onto the ground, and I had to go down. I had to go down the floor to pick it up, to pick it up. I was forced. To, no, not, well, I'm sorry. One of the nuns came along and seen, seen what was going on, and she ran up, and I was got such a fright, and I had to go down the floor and pick up, eat up the dinner from the potatoes off the floor where all the bloody germs were, like 99% of germs there, i say, because we were walking on that place so often. And I was always hungry, no shoes hardly, only, you know, unless you were going out. It was always cold, and very cold and sick. And there was a lot of things going on there. And put in into the bed and go to the toilets three or four times. I'd be wearing a nappy, or it wouldn't be one of those nappies you'd be wearing them going around the toilets and to go to the toilet in your nappy and you're afraid to see anything and always pull the ears of you and there's a lot of things going on with me and as well as other survivors but it's, um, I was so frightened and I went to school for a year but I don't remember going down to the school from the convent. I used to be looking up at statues and, and, and see Our Lady and, and, and Our Lord up there and I, I was wondering what they were. I had no clue what they were. And then I, after, after six and a half years of, of torment, and uh, I got no career, no, 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 nothing at all, no, no career, no school, no to no teaching, and no toys for Christmas, nothing at all, until I came home here in 1958 or 9. And I came home here to my father and my aunt and my all, all relations were here waiting for me. I, before I came home, I was a member coming out to the front door. And next thing, next thing, there was an ambulance outside the front door. There was a nurse and an ambulance driver, and they were waiting for me. And they, one of them they caught me. I, did, was, I was so nervous. I didn't know where I was going. And they caught me. They caught me coming out. And they took both sides and they threw me in the, in the back of the ambulance. And Coming to back of the ambulance, and I was in a dark area. I didn't know where I was going. I thought I was going to treat. I didn't know what I was what I was doing. I had no clue. Anyway, I landed here at home, and that's where I met my family here. My father and my my aunts on my mother's side and my father's side, my uncles and all. And um, they gave me a package of biscuits. And I always remember they were Marietta biscuits. 
and I got back and I got it all back up again. But before, at that time in June, I was if I wasn't, I was going to go to Little Frank and Little Frank and go and go all near Colomaro, so and only for my uh, my sister, my stepsister, my half sister, she's dead now, and she warned my father not to send me there because if I do go there, I'd be I'd be you know, coming home in a box, and that's the answer. And he had no sight in but to take me out, he had to he had to bail me out from the compound, pay for it to get me out of the compound, and that's when I came home, and I was always very nervous and sick. Um, when for the years I came back here, and I had to my I, I stayed with my aunt and uncle for until I was nine years old, and then I came back here to my my father, and until nineteen. 1973, when he got sick, and he would put in the, he would put in put into the, the home in lottery, and I was going on. I was always very nervous, and I got bad bad health up to you know, up to a few years ago, and I got everything, but but I never got no help from the state or the church. Now when no one ever came near me, I was, all this I was always very nervous, and this there was a lot more I can tell, but. It's, I believe that this is the important piece of our life, and I, we are now fighting for justice. We want justice. We want to get things done before we go. We don't, we're not getting young anymore. I'm 68 years of age, and and all the survivors along me are, are just are all the older me and, and same age me, and they need help too. And I think it's time for the church and stage to cop on and do something, and we even take up the take up the remains of all those of the children who were buried down there in the in the Tepe tank. It's time for the cop on and give give us something back because we, we never got into no education, no career. And that's it. Thank you for watching.